So these are the coefficient bars and I've mounted the housing under right here. So when I'm in this position, tucking my elbows in, trying to get real arrow, I have both switches and then I'll show you how they work. We're all the way down. And just hold. And that's it. Welcome back everybody to my annual YouTube video. In today's video, we're gonna learn how to make custom Shimano DI2 satellite shifters. These are extra buttons that go into your DI2 system that allow you to shift or assign some shifting mechanism to your DI2 system. This is great for those looking for a cheaper alternative to the very expensive Shimano branded satellite shifters out there on the market. I think they're like a hundred bucks for a pair. With this method, you'll be able to make two shifters for 15 bucks or less, maybe 10 bucks, depending on the length of DI2 cable that you go with. Now, in my particular use case, I'm building buttons for coefficient bars. This can be applied for literally any method that you want to use these for. If you can find a button, a momentary switch that fits into your requirements, you can apply this to that. But for this tutorial, we're going to do the coefficient housing that I've created. For this project, you're going to need a few things. A DI2 system, obviously, a soldering iron, solder, wire strippers, momentary switch or button, And if your button doesn't have a housing that, that it comes with, you'll have custom housing, which this is the one for the coefficient bars that I was talking about. All right, that being said, let's jump over to the workbench and let's get started on this. All right, so here we are on the bench. You're gonna need some DI2 cable. This is EWSD 300 by 950 mil. And out of these cable, you can get two buttons per cable because you only need one end on each side. Some pretty cheap wire snippers, trimmers from Harbor Freight to do the rough cut here. And then I'll use them to trim off the outer housing. It's very soft, so you don't need much. Uh, you should only have two cables. And this is where I'm gonna use one of those specialty tools that I was talking about. This is a Nipex, Knipex, I don't know what you wanna call it, mini wire stripper. Um, the wires here are tiny and I was not able to do it with, with wire strippers. So it is uh, stranded. Now, when you do this, if you're using this, it'll pull the wire a little bit out of the housing, uh, but you can, you can kind of, squeeze the housing and, and pull the inner wires back in. Um, I'm just pressing it together to get it through the hole on the 3D printed housing. Showing here what it would look like at this point. And this is the button. This is the button that I'm going with. And I'm actually gonna take a X-Acto knife and kind of pry up the feet because they come out of the bottom and then they come up the side of the housing and I'm going to pry them out and use them as a clamp to hold my wires in place. So I'll pry those up and then I kind of skipped over it, but, um, I mashed the feet back down over the wire. Uh, and then 
through video magic, I messed it up and I actually clamped the button now and you can see me mashing the feet over the wire. Let's do some soldering. This is super easy since they're being held in place by the feet. The wires are being held in place by the feet. Um, very simple. And that's pretty much it. It's largely done at this point. Just straighten it out and then press it into the housing. And at this point, if you want to put some epoxy on there, you can squeeze the epoxy up through the bottom end and have yourself a waterproof DI2 button. Plug it up. So that sums up this tutorial. I'm not going to do a write up on my website because I think there's already an excellent tutorial on bettershifting.com, I believe. Fantastic website. I'll leave a link in the description below. But once you have your, your button, you can plug it into your GI2 on my specific model. You'll have to look this up. The, the satellite port is the bottom one and you'll just take this and then plug it in to your satellite port. And then if you have one of these bad boys, give it a click and then there it is. You can, once this is on the bike, you can wire it wherever you want. Um, you can put it wherever you want. You don't have to go the, the way that I've done and there you go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative and I hope it inspires you to make your own buttons. And if you do make your own buttons and come up with your own ideas, send me a comment. I want to see what they look like. I'm stoked to see what you come up with. Thanks. Adios.